Father, this morning, I thank you for this day that we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Lord, I just thank you and love you and just ask that you would bless the remainder of the service to your glory and honor. It's in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Go and be seated. Please. Amen. You know, Easter is a, is a great time of year, but it's also kind of a, a touchy time. Do we celebrate or do we mourn? We mourn the death of our Savior, but we have to celebrate the fact that He resurrected and that He's alive. And so if we stay in the Monday Thursday mode, which is the, the weeping and the mourning, then, then we miss Sunday. We miss the resurrection. You know, um, Christmas is, is an awesome time too. Who loves Christmas? Christmas is hope. Christmas is God sending hope in the form of a baby in a manger in Bethlehem. His name was Jesus. Easter is the promise. See, Jesus lived his life sinless perfectly. He did everything right. He honored his Father in every single way. And the cruel world of Jews, Romans, and all of the other ethnicities nailed our Savior to the cross. We have to mourn that. Well, that should bring tears to our eyes. That should, make us, that should make us think twice about how awesome God is and what God has done. But he didn't end there. If he would have ended there, then Christmas would have meant nothing and Easter means nothing. But he rose. As a matter of fact, if you have your Bibles, sorry for the, the fuzzy screen. We'll get that fixed back there. Um, I'm just going to read some scripture to you. But I want to talk about the promise of Easter. Because if Christmas is the hope of, of humanity, then Easter is the culmination of that hope. And Jesus has been nailed on the cross. He's dealt with the two thieves. He's done all that he is supposed to do. And he says this in John chapter 19, beginning in verse 28. After this, Jesus, knowing that it was now finished, said, to fulfill scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Pray with me. Grace Heavenly Father, I pray that we will see the power of the word of God, the power of the words of Jesus, the power of Easter in these words. God, I pray that you will speak to us, that in the short time that we had left this morning, God, that you would, would show your awesome power through the transforming grace that comes through Jesus. And it's in his name that I pray. Amen. I've got about 12 minutes, and I have a 35-minute sermon. So I'm going to give you a good version. It is finished. That's a promise. See, now when we say it is finished, it's because we've, we've got all of our grocery shopping done. And we're like, man, I'm done. I get to go sit and yay. Or it's, you know, oh, I'm finished. I get to go lay down. I get to go watch TV. It's finished, you know. Whew, barely made it. Barely survived. That's not what this means. This is a Greek word and one Greek word, tetelestai, I think is how you pronounce it, tetelestai. Then I did pronounce it correctly. It's one word and it means this, to bring to an end, to complete, to accomplish. And it's a crucial word because unlike humanity, the where we, we're done, this is like this. This is like you just crested the very top of Mount Everest and you're planting your flag. You've finished the journey. Or you've, you've practiced and you've ran and you've, you, you're in shape and you run your first half marathon or your first marathon. And at the end, you're raising your hands because you've crossed the finish line, knowing that you had prepared and you had successfully completed the journey. Or it's Christ on the cross, having lived a sinless, perfect life, having been beaten, having been scorned, having been abandoned by his followers, and he's hanging on the cross, and he's basically saying, I have done what my Father sent me to do it is finished. It is completed. Folks, that's awesome. The promise is this, is that all that Jesus did and said it, at the cross meant that it was so. The promise is this, that you can trust what he says. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no one comes 
before, the, before my Father, before the Father in heaven, no one comes to him except through me. And the cross makes it possible for us to go through Jesus Christ. Because he paid the price. And the promise is, is that Jesus is always enough. See, the word, it is, the Greek word, it is finished, means this as well. It means that there was a beginning, there is a present, and there is an end. It wasn't, Jesus didn't say, I am finished. He said, the work of the Father is finished in me on earth. And that, that because it's a, it's, a, it's a present tense verb in the Greek, it has this connotation. It was, it is, and it will be. So what Jesus accomplished through his precious blood on the cross, which we sang about, which we saw numerous times the cross, what Jesus did on the cross was enough for everyone back then, it's enough for everyone today, and it's enough for everyone until Christ returns. It is enough. He paid the price. And the promise that Jesus makes is, I'm enough for you. I'm absolutely, completely, 100% all you need. See, we try to fill it with stuff. We try to fill it with, with work, with family, even with church and religion. But Jesus wants us to fill our lives with him. That's why he said, I am the truth. But he didn't just say, I am the truth. He said, I am the life. So if you want to know what the truth about life is, you need to know the way, which he said first. He said, I am the way, and I am the truth, and I am the life. So if you want to know what the promise is, then we have to follow Jesus because Jesus is the only way. It's the pathway to understanding why on earth are we here? See, Jesus didn't have to do what he did. He chose to do what he did. In a, in a real sense, he did have to do it because we would be hopeless without him doing it. And we had to have a way. And God in his sovereignty and in his infinite wisdom said, this is the pathway. And it runs straight through the heart of Christ. It is finished. Could you imagine life without Christ? See, Easter's not about what we celebrate commercially. It has nothing to do with any of that. I was amazed at how many places are closed today business-wise. Because in, in the secular world, Easter means nothing. It's about profit. And all the things that go hand in hand with that. But for the church... Jesus gave us Easter so that we as the, the body of Christ, the family of God, the followers of Christ, the church would, would remember every year what he accomplished for us. Everybody raise your hand and say after me, I am a sinner. Put your hands down. Every one of us are sinners. There is not one of us that has not sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all have sinned. And some of us might be sinning this very moment. But Jesus died for the sin that's in this room. He died for the sin that's in this valley. He died for the sin that's in this state and in this country and in this world. And it's enough for everyone. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. See, what Jesus accomplished on the cross, he, he did this. He said, now you have a real way to God. You have a real way to hope. You have a real way to peace. You have a real way to comfort. You have a real way for, for surviving and thriving in this world. This past week for my family you all probably all know, was the worst week in my 55 years. And if I had not hung on so tightly to my faith that Jesus is enough, I don't know what I would have done. But I can tell you this, he was enough. Didn't mean I didn't doubt. Didn't mean I wasn't frightened. It didn't mean I, I was out of control. But it meant that he was the balm the soothing agent, 
See, that's what the promise of, of, of Easter is, is that Jesus is your all and all in all things. Period. Financial, marital, um, family, children, work, play, fun. That Jesus is the center of the universe. And he's pointing to the Father in heaven. See, we get to have a relationship with God because of what Jesus has done. That means this, that we don't have to follow a bunch of rules. It's not about dotting every I and crossing every T. They're in the Word, and we know how to live by the Word. But when Jesus came, His blood that was shed on the cross made it possible for us to not have to toe a righteous religious line. All we have to do is trust in Him with faith that He gives us and live for Him. And see, that's a lot different than, well, I've got, I, I shall not steal. Don't steal. It's not good. I won't kill. Don't kill. It's not good. We all know what right and wrong is most of the time. But Jesus said, you know, I'll, I'll simplify all this. And Easter simplifies all this. He says, if you will trust me and you will follow me, then I will transform you into a person you could not have been before. I will give you a purpose. I will give you hope. I will give you the, the rationalization that you need to surrender your life to me so that you can live for me. And all this other stuff, all these rules and all these laws and all these things, you'll do them because you love me, because I've transformed you. Remember Nicodemus in John chapter 3? Nicodemus was, was this, this teacher. He was a brilliant, probably Old Testament scholar. And he came up to Jesus and he said, what must I do to be saved? How can I be right with God? Because evidently, I've got it wrong. And Jesus said this. He said, you must be, remember, born again. Well, how do you get born again, he says. And Jesus said, well, you know, it's, it's not like you think. It's not a flesh and blood. It's, it's, it's not like you were born the first time. It's a spiritual birth. You become, as Paul says, a new creation, something that never existed before, a, a new way of thinking, a new way of li living because you're a new person. That's what Jesus does. He takes you and he says, you are broken. And Ray says, yes, I'm broken. And he says, I'll fix you. And I say, fix me, God, I'm a sinner. I'm in need of what you have and who you are. And then the moment we profess faith in Jesus Christ, he begins his work of transforming us into the image of God. Not a God, but so that we have the character and the integrity and the, the, the thought process and the life process that pleases and honors God. See, that's the, one of the promises of Easter is that we get to be who we couldn't be before. We can say no to sin we can say no to shame. We can say no to everything that hinders us from walking with God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then Easter does this. And if you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 24, beginning with verse 1. Because it's all good and fine if Jesus died. God died. That would have been defeat. He died with the sin of the world on his shoulders. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the, woman, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of Jesus. Someone stole it. It's what the Romans said. It's what the, what the Pharisees said. It's what the religious leader said. The apostles stole that body away. He, it, it had to happen that way. And there might have been even some people that followed Jesus that thought, well, you know, maybe they're right because it's impossible for that tomb to be empty unless somebody took the body. But then Luke continues. While they were wondering about this, so everyone's pondering it, wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes, 
that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. He has risen. Remember, remember how he told you? Remember what he said? You know, Jesus never said he was going to die and stay dead. He told you he'd be resurrected. Don't you remember what he told you? While you were still in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered to the hands of sinners, be crucified on the third day, and be raised again. Ding! The light went on. And it said they remembered the words. He is risen. See, it wasn't in death that he defeated sin and Satan. It was in the resurrection. He died with the weight of the world on his shoulders, with the sin of, 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 of all humanity, all mankind on his shoulders. But when he arose from the grave, that is the icing on the cake. That's sealing the deal with God. It is finished. Jesus paid it all. He paid for all of it. And he's God alone. There is no other God. Hamrabi, Mo, uh, Mohammed, no matter who. There's, no, there, there's one God. And there's one Savior, and his name is Jesus. That's what Easter is about. And so here's something you get to take home this morning. That if you trust in Jesus, you have hope. If you trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can have peace. No matter what your life circumstances are. If you trust in Jesus, then you have a way to God that was not open to you before. See, we could never, we could never do enough. See, the resurrection of Jesus Christ dispels any, any idea that we have anything to do with our salvation or anything to do with our walk with God. We can't be good enough. We can't work hard enough. We can't believe enough in stuff, but we can believe in Jesus. And Jesus says, not only am I the way, the truth, and the life, but he says that there's going to come a time when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But right now, we have that opportunity to do it today. I'm going to ask if you'll stand with me. And I want to lead us in a word of prayer. And then we're going to sing a song. And it's not a normal invitation song. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to sing through the first couple stanzas of this song. And then I want you to pretty much pause in your brain and go, Lord, how am I supposed to respond to you being God? To this being Easter. For Jesus having given his all just for me. Because see, he did. He gave his all just for you. I believe that if I was the only person on earth, Jesus would have died for me. If the, if the other side of that would be, I'd go to hell without him. And he did it for you. So praise team, come on up. We're going to sing, You Are God Alone. And here's what I want you to do. What I said earlier. Take a little pause. And then if God is telling you to do something, be courageous. Step out from where you're standing or sitting. Come and take my hand and say, God is dealing with me. I really want to know what Easter's about. So let's sing.